uh, I would like to start by welcoming everybody joining this webinar. Uh, my name is Christina Swiderska. I am a researcher at IIED. I lead the IIED work on biocultural heritage. So I'm thrilled to open this webinar series on Indigenous peoples' food systems and COVID-19. Indigenous peoples have sustained a very rich diversity of crops and livestock based on their knowledge systems and cultural and spiritual values. And this biocultural heritage has proved highly resilient, not only to climate change, but also to uh, COVID-19. So today we will hear evidence of this from indigenous peoples in Kenya and Peru. And then next Tuesday, the 14th, and we'll hear from indigenous next. peoples in India and China. And so I would like to introduce uh, Alejandro Agumedo, who is the International People Coordinator of and INMIP. China, who is the International Coordinator of INMIP. INMIP is the international uh, network of mountain indigenous peoples. And Alejandro uh, will chair the webinar series. He is also president of the board of directors of Asociación Andes Peru. So before handing over, I just briefly would like to introduce INMIP. This is a global network of indigenous mountain communities and their partner organizations. It spans 11 countries in Latin America, Africa and Asia. It was established in 2014 in Bhutan and it seeks to protect and revitalize biocultural heritage for community resilience and food sovereignty. It has uh, held already four global community to community learning exchanges in Bhutan, Tajikistan, Peru and Kyrgyzstan. And these walking workshops have been highly effective for sharing innovations, for building capacity and for mobilizing action to protect the unique biocultural heritage and landscapes of indigenous peoples. So, um, that's uh, by way of opening, I will now hand over to Alejandro Agumedo, the chair, thanks. Thank you, Cristina, and uh, thank you and everyone for attending this uh, exciting webinar. Um, IMIP, as Cristina said, is a broad alliance of indigenous peoples, communities and organizations across um, 13 mountain countries um, uh, all over the, the planet. And one of the key issues that IMIT, IMIT uh, as a network focuses on food sovereignty and the defense of indigenous food systems, particularly in mountain ecosystems. We all know that, um, you know, at a UN, um, all countries pledge uh, to Agenda to, uh, 2030 to end hunger and poverty on all the planet over the next 10 years. This, um, as we know, um, it's, uh, it's going to be a hard goal to achieve as the number of hungry and malnourished peoples uh, is on the rise worldwide. And we believe that this is because of these decades and decades of free market neoliberalism that have, have caused uh, poverty, inequality, and above all, resource and land grabbing, as well as environmental, uh, economic, and social injustice. Um, we live now in this context of COVID-19, which has exposed how this um, industrial food system um, and this globalized food systems that we um, uh, we live in or we have with us is contributing not just to you know this inequities but also to ecological destruction. We see soya plantations in Brazilian Amazon. Uh, land grabbing happening at large scale in Africa and Asia and all that has pushed all this jumping 
of viruses and through humans and these large pandemics that um, we are facing. Um, and the response from governments to this pandemic has been also um, highly um, negative for communities. Uh, in cities, we have seen loss of jobs. Um, in, at the beginning of the pandemic, we've seen that the lockdowns have not allowed people to continue to practice their um, traditional food systems. But while this COVID was a blow, particularly for cities, um, also it has shown uh, how indigenous peoples and communities have tools and a strong resilience that has responded to this um, global crisis. While in immigrant countries, um, the um, narrative of COVID recovery is being um, weaved, uh, promoting by prom uh, in a way that promotes more um, the um, a productivity at any cost. Um, indigenous peoples, uh, food systems, and the biocultural dynamics at the local level show a different picture. And this webinar um, is meant to um, tell that story. IMIC has organized um, or, and the participation of um, the countries where IMI members do um, are creating or weaving different types of alternatives um, will tell us um, and the story of hope um, where <clears throat> from within, from the ground, um, IMIT um, members are, are creating different food systems that may uh, provide um, a, a picture of how from localization of food systems we can weave a large a global system that can respond to this crisis. And also at EMIP, we have been very uh, concerned and critical about <clears throat> the upcoming um, uh, um, uh, uh, food system summit. Um, <clears throat> this is because uh, we believe that this, um, this summit um, rather than focusing and strengthening these localized food systems that are uh, around the world are responding or have responded to the crisis and have provided alternatives and keep feeding most of the, uh, uh, of the people affected by this pandemic are not being supported by the national governments. Um, it's urgent that if we want to transform this unhealthy, unjust, and unsustainable food system, we need to have to shape this differently. Um, we need to base it on human rights, on indigenous people's rights, and we need to challenge it um, from, from the ground. Um, uh, this is a very critical moment uh, for indigenous peoples. It is um, um, critical that we organize this um, because fundamentally we want to ensure that the realization of food sovereignty and the right to food uh, the right that in, uh, local people have to adequate food, but also um, the right of participating in policy making and the right to defend our food producing habitats and ecologies. Those are the spaces where people have the social relations um, 
and where the knowledge is, uh, is weaved, is shaped, so it's the cornerstone, the territories are the cornerstone of food sovereignty. Having said that, um, uh, today we have the participation of two Imib countries, the Rabai communities in Kenya, and, <clears throat> and the Potato Park in Peru, um, both uh, approaches, both initiatives are grounded on human rights, on people rights, and are looking for system change and based on justice. Um, we see that uh, these initiatives are a response to the uh, corporate interest uh, that dominates uh, the food systems in each one of our nations. And we want to build uh, a relationship with uh, the public institutions that should be supported, supporting these initiatives rather than creating the spaces for more corporate, corporate takeover that, or the public policy making as it's happening in the food uh, system summit. So these are solutions uh, that are responding to the multiple crises that we live, COVID, food crisis, the economical crisis, based on the experiences that people have on living on those lands for hundreds of hundreds of years. Um, this is also an effort um, that seeks uh, and pushes the government to regulate more the corporation take over or the food systems and particularly to stop land grabbing on indigenous lands. And we want to democratize research and we want to reclaim uh, the public institutions that are now being co-opted by the, um, uh, the corporate interests in our countries. So now we have to get this. Um, briefly, we'll have a short introduction by the coordinator of the IMIP uh, country in Kenya. So um, um, he would um, present uh, the, the short program that we, we have for for Kenya, uh, a short introduction, um, and uh, we will invite uh, Chimuko uh, to please uh, take the floor and um, follow with um, uh, the, the introduction and the, uh, the traditional ceremony that our brothers and sisters from the Rabai community have prepared. Chimuko, the floor is yours. Thank you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to give a short summary of the Rabai community. Sorry, we had a small technical challenge. And uh, Rabai community is a community that is based in coastal Kenya with a population of about 120,000 people. And uh, the, the area of coverage is about 20,000 hectares. And uh, this community is one of the indigenous communities that you find in coastal Kenya, uh, in an area with a lot of uh, rich history, because this is where Christianity began in the country and also education. But the community has stuck to their culture, their tradition, their heritage. And for over 10 years now, we have worked with this community to be able to conserve the rich agrobiodiversity that we have in the land and other resources, because the area is very rich uh, in wild plant, food plants, is also very rich in traditional food crops, uh, rich in uh, medicinal plant tree species, and also rich in terms of the livestock we have. We have other resources like the wetlands, the rivers, the small uh, hills that occur within the landscape that forms part of the territorial landscape that we have in Rabai. And uh, uh, with those many years of working together, we have been able to come up with a, a, a cultural village that we are working to expand and scale it up into a biocultural heritage territory 
based on the experience that we learned from Peru, uh, the potato park, the work that is being led by Alejandra. Uh, so uh, we have several, maybe just to mention uh, several crops that are commonly grown, cassava being one of them, maize, coconut, green grams, and a cow piece, which is like an emblemic species for the community. And to, that is just the summary of the community. So uh, I have a team that uh, I work with, I just, the technical team, I just want them to say their names and then sit. Then after we will have a traditional dance. Uh, for the, performed by the uh, rabbi community. Then from there, we will follow up on the presentation. We have four presenters who will give a presentation on the various aspects of territorial land management practices that are being undertaken. Uh, so I will start with my colleague. There she will say her name and what she does. I'm Caroline Manya, a technologist at Kenya Forest Research Institute. Uh, I work with the Rabai community and support them mostly through training on territorial uh, landscapes uh, management practices, uh, which contribute a lot towards uh, INMIP activities. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Leila Andalillo. I work with the Kenya Forest Research Institute. I'm a social uh, scientist, and I look at the linkages between people, their cultural heritage, and the connection to conservation. Thank you. Thank you, my colleagues, for the introduction. The members are community members. They will come on during the presentation. So I wish to call upon the community members to perform our dance for five minutes.
Uh, thank you very much. Uh, that was uh, one of the traditional songs for the rabbi community. And now we want to move on to the next session where we are going to have presentation from the community. The community are going to present on a various aspect of the landscape, including the agrobiodiversity and how they are using this agrobiodiversity to, to cope with the COVID-19 pandemic. They will also talk about COVID-19 pandemic effect to the community and how it has affected them and how they are responding to this using the traditional knowledge, the rich agrobiodiversity, the indigenous food system that we have in place. And during this presentation, which will be done in Swahili, we will have to uh, Leila translating it. I'm calling upon the first presenter, Leno, who is uh, one of the youth members of the group, and make his presentation. Lennox, Karibu. Thank you, Mr. Chemuko. Uh, my presentation uh, will basically uh, be about uh, the Rabai landscape. And uh, Rabai landscape uh, has about 59 different crops varieties. And uh, this includes also uh, traditional vegetables. Uh, ambazo ni very nutritious and also medicinal. Uh, that's why you can see the old uh, members of our community, like the Kaya elders, uh, at their age, at their age, uh, they are still very strong compared to us. Now, uh, because these are traditional food crops and uh, vegetables are medicinal, uh, we believe that uh, the uh, COVID-19 um, uh, pandemic, uh, it's not easy uh, to attack, it, it's not easy to attack us because uh, these foods that we are taking are very nutritious and they boost our immune system. That is uh, one. Uh, Pili. Ah, yeah. Pili. Uh, uh, tuko na vyakula hivi vya kitamaduni ambavyo mara nyingi tunavitumia katika uh, kualisha wageni wetu ambao wanatembelea ule mji wetu wa kitamaduni wa Rabai Cultural Village I will uh, translate so Lennox uh, just mentioned that the rich uh, food from Rabai community is very nutritious uh, that's the traditional uh, food so it helps in uh, boosting immunity against uh, common diseases. And also in terms of improving local economy, they have a gastronomy group anchored uh, in the Rabai Cultural Village where they are able to sell uh, traditional cu uh, cuisine to visiting tourists and they're able to generate money that goes directly into supporting the local community. Now, wakati tukiendelea kufanya hivyo, uh, imepatia wengi wale ambao ni wanajamii kwa sababu mara kwa mara tunapata wakina na tutembelea wao pia nao wanapanda vyakula hivi ambavyo mara nyingi wanatuuzia sisi na wengine katika jamii na wanatengeneza kipato na kwa kufanya hivi pia imeweza kuleta amuamko kwa vijana ambao ni wakizazi hiki wengi wao hawana ufahamu kuhusu vyakula hivi. Kwa hiyo kwa kuvipanda na kuanza kuviuza uh, katika ile cultural village kuna vijana wameweza kujifunza hapo na wameingia katika uh, mpango huu wa kuweza kuvipanda na wengine kuanza kuvila. So Lennox is uh, saying that uh, through the Rabai cultural uh, village and the sale of traditional uh, foods to visiting tourists uh, the youth have uh, been uh, attracted to uh, engage in uh, activities aimed at uh, promoting the rabbi cultural uh, group activities and also because they need to sustain the supply of uh, food stuff that they sell to tourists 
it has uh, cultivated a culture of people growing more and more traditional crops to sustain the supply. And because the youth have uh, realized that uh, it can be a sustainable income generating activity, they are increasingly participating in the activities of Rabai Cultural Village. And that way, the culture is being transmitted to the youth and the cultivation of traditional crops is also being sustained. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you, Lennox, for that uh, brief presentation. We were given 25 minutes, so we are moving fast. So the next presenter uh, uh, will be Akaya Elder, because this is a initiative, and uh, we have Akaya Council of Elders that are uh, uh, responsible for the management of the landscape. Management uh, kind of uh, structure under uh, the chair of the Council of Elders, uh, uh, Mr. Daniel Carrero, will come and make his presentation on the road to the Council in managing the landscape, in preserving agrobiodiversity, and also protecting the kayas. Daniel Carrero. So my name is uh, Daniel Mawara Guerrero. I am a Kaya Elder. I'm a, the chairman of the Kaya Elders uh, Council. And the Kaya Elders Council is a traditional governance system that is anchored on the local culture of the Rabai community. And we manage the Kaya forests, which are the traditional forests and also the landscape. So I will uh, explain our role in that. Kwa vile inatupatia hewa safi, mvua na hata madawa pia. So we conserve the Kaya forest as uh, the council of uh, Kaya elders. And uh, this is because of the important role of Kaya forest in uh, sustaining the community, the role it plays in uh, sustaining food supply and also providing medicinal plants, which we use to promote our health. So he's emphasizing the role of uh, Kaya Forest in providing medicinal plants. And he just gave an example of uh, how healthy generally the community is because of the sustained supply of uh, medicinal uh, plants. And uh, he also mentioned that uh, even currently when the world is facing the challenge of uh, COVID-19, the community has suffered very minimal uh, effects because of the use of these uh, medicinal plants from Kaya Forest. And he, also emphasize that despite his advanced age, as you can see, he looks very youthful because of the use of these medicinal plants and also the wild food plants from the sacred fire forest. Okay. <laughs> We are also ensuring as Kaya Elders Council that we transmit the knowledge to the youthful generation. So we've been including them in our initiatives to make sure that this knowledge is passed down to them. And uh, also the knowledge related to use of uh, medicinal plants to protect the community against uh, pandemics. 
such as the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, thank you, Daniel, for that uh, short and precise presentation. We now move on to the next presenter, who is uh, uh, Madam Nuvuno. She's also a member of the Rabai community and also Rabai culture. And she's going to talk about some of the recipes that we have uh, for the community and their uh, role to uh, tackling some health related issues and their linkage to the culture of the Michikenda community. Majina naitwa Luvuno Joha Mkuzi. Nitaangazia kuhusu vyakula vitatu. Cha kwanza ni bumbunda, ya pili jora na ya tatu kishombo. Uh, my name is uh, Luvuno. I'm a member of the Rabai Cultural Group and I'm going to talk more about the common uh, cuisines amongst the Rabai community. I'm going to narrow down on three types of food. That is Jora, Chishombo, and Mbumbunda. Eni tangazia kuhusu Mbumbunda. Mbumbunda ni chakula ambacho kinatengeneso na ndisi. Unambua yale maganda. Halafu, unachangaya na unga kidogo. Unafinyilia au unavibonda kwa pamoja. Halafu, unavipika. Kumbunda is a local uh, food that is made from uh, ground uh, banana flour mixed with uh, maize flour. You cook it together, you pound it, and then you make a paste out of it. Kishombo. Kishombo ni chakula vya, ni, ni jakula aina marambili. Amba vya huo na kichanganya, ni nakuwa chakula kimoja. Kwa mfano, Kuna muhogo ambao unaweza kuchanganya na kunde kwa pamoja. Unafipika, hiyo ndiyo kishombo. So kishombo is a mixture of uh, cowpeas and uh, cassava cooked and uh, pounded uh, together. So it's a common delicacy of the rabbi community. Chakula chamwisho ni jora. Jora ni chakula ambacho kinatengenezwa na muhogo. Unambua maganda. Alafu unakatakata vipande, unavianika kutumia jua. Unawaza kuanika mpaka siku tatu. Bari akua vimekauka, unabonda bonda. Unakifaa tunaita kinu, unabonda bonda. Alafu ule unga, wake ndio unapika, unapika chakula, kinachofanana kama sima ya mahindi. So the last uh, food that I'm going to talk about is uh, jora. Jora is uh, a mixture of maize flour that is uh, mixed with uh, water and made into a paste that is uh, then used to eat alongside with uh, other dishes like vegetables, beans, or any other stew. Chakula hicho huwa ni kitamu. Na sana sana huwa ukitumia chakula hicho. Sira hisi kutoka kwa tumbo. Na kina tujenga, na kina tutia ngufu, ili hali pia ni dawa ambayo huwe na kata mafuta kwa mwili. So the food stuff that I've talked about are very nutritious. They help the members of the community because uh, once you eat, you remain full for a very long time. You're able to do uh, manual work like uh, farm work and stay. Um, yeah. It's unfortunate, but um, I think they will come back. Um, I think they are back. Okay, okay. I'll uh, continue. So, uh, Luvuno was uh, talking about the food stuff. So she emphasized that these uh, food are uh, very nutritious. They help boost uh, body immunity amongst members of the community and they help prevent them from uh, contracting common uh, diseases. And they also help uh, in form of uh, building social uh, cohesion amongst members of the community. 
because these foods are commonly consumed during traditional uh, ceremonies, like when a baby is born, members of the community come together when they are wedding and funeral ceremonies. They consume these foods as a group, so, so they kind of help build a social cohesion amongst members of the community. Thank you. Tunapenda hivyo vya kula kama wamejikenda. Sante. So she just added that they really love the food as a Mijikenda community, and uh, she thanked the audience for listening to her. Okay, thank you, uh, Madam Luvuno. Now we have the last presenter, who is our youth. And one of the challenges we have had is succession, because many youth are not taking up farming and also traditional knowledge and don't appreciate even the indigenous food. So we have our youth uh, with us who has been a, a very a critical to uh, drive the agenda of getting youth get to participate more in this initiative uh, in the landscape. And she's coming to speak to, to us on what they are doing. So Salma. Majina naitua Salma Chirindo Chiringa, niko hapa kuwakilisha vijana. My name is Salma uh, Chiringa, Chirindo Chiringa, and I'm here to represent the youth. Nitokelea umuhimu wa vyakula vya kienyeji, kupitia kwa mama, mimi niko na uweleji ule wakuafuata kama kuna mashere, kama mwaka mpya hui wakirabai, ambapo wakati wa mwaka mpya kuna vyakula vya kiasili aina fulani huwa vinapikwa pale sasa nimeweza kufahamu kuwa vyakula hivi viko na nguvu ukila unapata nguvu na pia unaweza kukaa muda mrefu bila kuisinja so as uh, the youth we've been able to learn so much from the elder women about uh, preparation of uh, traditional foods of the rabai community how to grow them in the farm, how to take care of them, and also the preparation in terms of uh, cooking methods. And we appreciate, we've been able to learn this mainly during the cultural uh, ceremonies, like the Rabai cultural, uh, the New Year Festival that is held uh, annually, and also through our participation in activities of the Rabai cultural village. Kenye nimejua umuhimu wake, nitaweza kuhamasisha vijana wenzangu ili na wao waweze kuappreciate the importance of these indigenous food crops na tuweze pia kupanda kwenye mashamba ili hata wazee pia watakapo kuwa wamezeeka sana mimea bado hiyo inapatikana katika mashamba. So as a youth uh, advocate, I've uh, been uh, trying to sensitize and create awareness amongst uh, my fellow youth for them to be able to appreciate the importance of traditional foods and also to participate in their cultivation as well as uh, preparation, especially at home. So thank you so much for listening to me. Uh, thank you, uh, Salma. I think at uh, the end of our presentation, and we had about 25 minutes. So I hand over back to the chair to be guided on the next step. Thank you. Thank you, Chemuko. Thank you very much to all our brothers and sisters there in the Rabai community. And it's so good to hear from you and uh, you, your experience. Um, Perhaps like we could open for a short questions from the audience, if there is any, uh, so that our, <clears throat> our uh, the members of the community can just follow up um, if they wish with some uh, reflections and comments. And to begin, I have a, a quick um, question for you, Chemuko. It's, uh, uh, I think, something that it's common in the Imip communities. It's, have you had uh, cases of COVID in the community? And if there was any fatality due to this pandemic? Okay, thank you. 
should I go ahead? I think I will give one of the community members to to respond. Eh, asante sana. Itajibu hili swali. Sisi kama community ama jamii ya Warabai eh tuseme tunashukuru sana kwa sababu gonjwa la corona limeingia lakini sisi kama jamii ya Warabai halijatuathiri sana japo eh, cases ni kidogo sana. Na hiyo inatuonesha ina, ina kwamba kupitia kwa miti zetu ama miti shamba ambayo tunaitumia na vyakula vetu nafikiri imetusaidia. Kwa hivyo corona haijatuathiri vile. Mohamed uh, Kadilo just uh, mentioned that uh, as a community uh, so far there have been uh, zero deaths uh, recorded and he attributes uh, that uh, mainly to the medicinal plants that are commonly used by the community as well as the traditional foods that they commonly consume. So they believe that has uh, played a very critical uh, role in boosting the immune systems and uh, they've been spared from uh, the fatalities related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you. Is there any question for our member, uh, for our participants, from our participants? Thank you, Matt. We have a question from Mohamed Kadilo, so we take up the question. Mohamed, go ahead. Ah, yeah. Mimi, that's true. So long, so we take up the question. Lisa, swali langu na uliza. Sisi kama jamii tumeeleza vile jinsi ambavyo tumekabiliana na gonjwa hili la la corona. Sasa si swali langu na uliza je, nyinyi wenzetu katika hali hii mmepokea vipi na jinsi gani ambayo ambavyo muna 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 handle hii hali ya hili janga la corona? Okay, Mohammed is saying that uh, you asked us a question about COVID-19 and he just gave the response. And the community would want to know how are their colleagues in the potato park handling this? Is the situation similar to what we have or it is different? And if it is different, how? Yeah. And I think this is a, a, a good moment to introduce um, our friends from the Potato Park, our brothers and sisters from the Potato Park, so that they can also share their experience um, during this pandemic and also reflect on uh, their own indigenous food system there in the Potato Park. Well, so thank you very much uh, to the Rabai community um, and the uh, moderators there, Chemuko. Um, and um, we will now move um, and introduce to our um, brothers and sisters in the Potato Park. Um, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Alejandro, but we just have received uh, a question in the, okay. in the chat box. Is it please, possible for one please, question? Please. Yes, please. Yes. So, Go ahead. Uh, this is a question from Tegan uh, Gaetano. Would you like to put your camera on and ask it, or, or, or should I go ahead and read it? Sure, sure. I'll, I'll put on my camera. So I was um, curious if uh, your community um, has received um, interest in the productions that uh, traditional foods and medicines confer both within um, the country of Kenya, and then maybe from um, outside. Sorry, interest in the protections. Could you could you explain that a little, please? What do you mean? Sure, the protections that are conferred by the traditional foods against COVID nineteen um, and the well being that they um, also uh, allow. So, interest from who? Uh, are you are you interested in knowing about? Oh, sorry, from from outsiders. So from people outside of the community, um, either you know within um, other communities in Kenya or outside other countries, other peoples. Thank you. Chemuko. Yes, we will translate the question to the community. They give their 
take team then we can add leila can you translate please so uh kuna mmoja ameuliza ya kuwa je kulingana na hii hadithi mmeelezea ya kuwa mmeweza kujikinga kutokana na corona kwa ajili ya vyakula vyetu na pia zile madawa zenye tunatumia je kumekuwa na wale wenzetu ambao wametoka sehemu za nje pengine jamii za nje ama nchi ya nje ama sehemu za nje wenye wamependezwa wakasema hata na sisi ungependa tupate ufahamu kwa ajili ya kuweza kujisaidia na eh, na wapate hiyo chakula okay. Lenox is going to uh... Aya, sisi naweza kupokea ni yani kituo kimoja cha uh, cha utafiti wanaitwa NPI wa washakuja huku kuja kuangalia wameshawahi kumobilize hawa baadhi ya wazee na wale watibabu kuweza kujua uh, miti ambayo wanatumia ili kuweza kujikinga na janga hili la corona na pia kuweza kuuliza je mbali na hii miti ambayo ni dawa kuna na vyakula ambavyo ni dawa pia kwa hiyo tushawahi kupokea wa wageni tushawaitwa kwa kongamano hapo Upwani University ili kuweza kupeana habari hii ambayo inahusiana na miti yetu pamoja na aina ya vyakula tunavyotumia uh, Lennox just uh, mentioned that yes they received uh, interest uh, mainly from uh, private uh, medical researchers who've had uh, who wanted to understand more about the rabai food and medicinal uh, plants and how they are contributing to overcoming the challenges related uh, to covid-19 and uh, as a result these uh, researchers have uh, mobilized members of the community held some uh, discussions with the council of uh, kaya elders and they've also attended uh, some members of the community have also attended some workshops aimed at sensitizing other communities and sharing information on how their food systems and uh, medicinal plants are contributing to their protection against the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you. I think Great. back to the chair. Thank you, Chamuko. Thank you, Leila. And thank you very much to all the members of the Rabbi, Rabbi community. And now I think it's time to move uh, to Peru. And I had a pleasure to introduce to my um, brothers and sisters in the Potato Park, uh, who will also share their experience during this pandemic, but particularly focusing on how the local food systems are responding. And before that, allow me just to say a couple of words regarding the situation in Peru, where our government had basically abdicated the responsibilities and regulatory functions in favor of purely market-based mechanisms. Um, our policies in agriculture, climate change, health, uh, etc., reminds focus on supporting big agribusiness, big corporations. Uh, they get like, you know, f tax incentives, um, very friendly regulations and policies, um, and the government tries to give more um, uh, more land for um, agribusiness expansion and very little support to communities um, in this case. As you know, Peru um, has been one of the countries uh, uh, worst hit by the pandemic. We have the highest per capita debt in the world. Nonetheless, in communities, and this is responding to your question um, of my brother there, <clears throat> in communities such as the Potato Park and other communities that ha have maintained the traditional food systems, also we haven't had cases of COVID and no a single death. And this shows 
uh, <clears throat> the power of traditional crops, traditional food systems, in terms of nutritional value and the immune boosting, boosting uh, properties. While people have lost work, their jobs in the cities, people in the countryside doing agriculture in localized food systems are better off because they can sell the products, they have access to food, they have clean air, they have clean water, and therefore and we have had a large influx of people from the city moving back to the, <clears throat> to the countryside, to communities, and that has created um, different types of problems, um, of course, that the communities are solving now. Just recently, as uh, 10 days ago, the Potato Park has shared, I believe, um, uh, more than 12 tons of potato seed with neighboring communities uh, because seeds are pretty much in demand. Um, last year, there was no much seed production due to the lockdown, and they have been working over the year so they could do this type of sharing. Um, I'm very sure my, um, my brothers and sisters will be uh, sharing this uh, experience. Um, in terms of the quality, uh, the nutritional quality of the foods, you know uh, how quinoa uh, and amaranthus and other types of traditional foods are thought, uh, are appreciated in international market because of this of these uh, uh, nutritional qualities that continues to be uh, the main food sources of the communities who source themselves from uh, you know the landscapes and the food producing habitats those types of, um, uh, of products and that's why for us this um, uh, food system summit doesn't make sense um, in terms of the focus on uh, this uh, multi-stakeholder uh, approaches rather than focusing on um, supporting and strengthening the rights of local people that produce most of the food of the world. Um, corporations have taken over uh, these uh, UN processes and we would like to see that um, these are more democratized rather than in these large spheres uh, have these types um, or have these policies within our own countries in a more localized set of uh, um, uh, <clears throat> policy environments like a regional or local governments. So, uh, I'm going to pass it to my um, sister, um, uh, Ricardina, and to uh, my brother, uh, Aniceto, who will be chairing these sessions, and will, I think we will introduce um, this session also with um, um, a um, ceremony there from the Potato Park, and hopefully also and uh, they will be sharing some type of cultural um, expression. Thank you. Aniceto Ricardina, por favor, ustedes tomen la sesión. Gracias. To begin, in the name of the Association of the Potato Park Communities, Especially, we'd like to welcome everyone who's participating today in the uh, conference. And an especially warm welcome to our brothers and sisters in Kenya. And we're, we're very glad to be a part of the Association of INMIP. And today we join you from, from the Potato Park, where you can see our ecosystems and our biodiversity. And we have our mix of, of men and women here to present with you today. Uh, 
And to begin, we're going to we're going to have a kinfuchi ceremony to begin today with our compañero Lino. Begin uh, blessings and welcome from the Potato Park. To begin any activity, we need to ask permission from our sacred mountains and here in the Potato Park. Uh, and also, we'll, we'll send blessings to the mountains of Kenya. Here in the Potato Park, our biggest mountain is, is in front of us. So first, uh, a, bl uh, a blowing of coca. So we have a male mountain and a female mountain. We'll send blessings to both. Uh, now we'll, we'll send blessing to the Mother Earth. And, and in order to do this, we will, we will bury our coca in order to give this positive energy to the Earth. We're grateful for Lino for his ability to, to start with this Kintu today. And, and we're grateful to be here with our sacred mountains today. To begin, we'll, we'll have a, a short presentation of some music. <laughs> well, th this is how we start always in the potato park with our dances. So, uh, hablando más. Uh, now we would like to share from the potato park our experience. 
and, and during all these years of our project. But during all these years, we have seen that in, in large countries that there has been a lot of coronavirus, a lot of infections. And we've seen millions of people who are suffering in different countries. But, but we have seen and we have lived with through this virus that, that communities and, and indigenous communities that we've out of 100% had maybe only 10 or 20 percent of people who've had any symptoms. And in all of these agricultural communities where we have our, our native crops, and these crops have protected us, uh, especially with what we eat, and, and we've had not even one death. In, in these communities of the Potato Park. In the Potato Park, we have a lot of different crops that are especially useful in protecting us from illness. And in the Potato Park, we have a great diversity of, of potato. We have colored potatoes. Which are, are preventative for, for different illnesses. And thanks to these Andean crops and to our indigenous agriculture, we've been protected in these communities. We've had we've had no deaths in the in the potato park. And thanks to, to the nature as well which gives us medicinal plants and wild plants and to our traditional knowledge which has been left to us by our ancestors we've been able to use these medicinal plants and thanks to these this knowledge <laughs> we've been protected but we've we've lived through this pandemic we know that very well that during this pandemic, many of our brothers have returned from large cities because uh, they they left the, the community in order to find work, in order to study, but now they've come back. And here in Cusco, uh, all of these these brothers and sisters arrived during the quarantine. And in the potato park, we give a donation uh, of potatoes to to these migrants, even if they weren't from our communities, who are passing through Cusco. And our 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 ancestors taught us. And so as the Potato Park, we were able to give this donation to these people who were living through the quarantine and, and as well to, to ancianos, to um, uh, this was an act of, of solidarity with our, with our brothers and sisters who were living through a harder situation. And as well, we, we helped to support children who, who were left without their parents. The, the Potato Park made this donation of 10 tons of, of potato. Of especially colored potatoes. And recently we've donated as well these seeds to communities throughout the region of Cusco in order to help uh, regenerate these, these especially healthy potatoes in communities throughout the country. We've, we've worked many years with these potatoes in order to multiply their seeds. Uh, and especially we've now shared with, with other uh, agricultural associations. And with our brothers and sisters from different communities throughout the region of Cusco. 
this this was the participation uh, this was my presentation and now i will introduce my my colleague ricardina I'm very grateful to participate in this conference. I'm going to talk about the return of migrants during the situation of COVID. And even though it's been difficult uh, from the beginning, from the beginning, our communities have been well organized. Uh, and we didn't let anyone come in uh, so that they didn't bring infection. And this uh, allowed us not to have to stay close into our houses. We didn't have quarantine. And these migrants who had um, gone to live in the cities had to come back and live with us because everything in the cities was very bad. With quarantine, everyone was closed inside their houses. And they were very worried for their children because of this illness. Uh, many of these people have come back and are now again dedicating themselves to working the land. And in the, in the community, we haven't lacked anything. And our um, food security in the communities has allowed us to uh, provide food for everyone. Food security for us is the most important. We always have in our storage enough food for the full year. So that we never are Uh, we also have our animals that we take care of, not just the crops that we grow, uh, including cereal crops, potatoes, um, animals, and the, the production of all crops. And we also have our family members who live in the city. We are able to provide this food with. This is the work that we are able to do in, in our agricultural lands. And we are not thinking about that we're thinking about if we're going to earn money or not. Instead, what is important is to have our, our food stored uh, just in case anything happens. Uh, money won't help but we, we're always able to live as agriculturalists from our own storage and we're always able to eat our own crops uh, we have we have no no lack of food our, our food security is based on this storage of food And the, the earning of money is, is not nearly as important in life as, as our food security in the community. And this is how our, our food security system in, in these agricultural communities of the Potato Park works. Uh, now Mariano will present. Now Mariano is speaking. Welcome everyone. Thanking them for attending the webinar. Especially to his, his great friend Timoku in Kenya. Uh, he's going to, to talk about the system of the potato park. Here in the potato park, we have three IUs, three communities. And based on this, this Sistema IU, 
our, our ecosystem, our nature is healthy and complete. Uh, we're having quite a, a wind storm here right now, which is, is interfering a bit with the connection. Yeah, our deepest apologies. This is um, how um, the challenges we are going face for live streaming from the field. It could be the weather, um, but hopefully they will be back in a, in a minute. Um, <clears throat> Anyhow, I think my colleague Mariano was referring to how this model they have implemented in the Puteo Park <clears throat> has been fundamental for the responses that they have. And the IU system <clears throat> brings together three different communities uh, to collaborate, to cooperate, to reciprocate so that these communities can work together and achieve balance. The communities or the humans and everything that lives with or near humans, near humans, and the crops and the crops. Hello. And uh, then the community of the Salja, which is the community of the wild, <clears throat> where humans don't have much influence wildlife, the wind, the rain, um, wild species of plants, etc. and the community of the sacred, which is everything that connects people with a spiritual world that also do participate in the management of the landscapes of food producing habitats, such as the sacred mountains, um, the places where ancestors continue to uh, support the work of uh, families and the community. And that, I think it's um, a fundamental in the perception of communities to achieve this balance. When humans work with nature and the sacred, they achieve this balance that creates what we call Sumach Kausai, Buen Vivir, and the community's objectives in the Potato Park is to achieve that. Um, I believe um, uh, they are making efforts in, in, in the community uh, to, um, to restore um, uh, the connection. There is a strong wind um, in the um, in the lookout where the, this the transmission was uh, hoping to, um, to to carry out from um, so that um, we could benefit from the view of the potato park but um, unfortunately um, this is not uh, taking place and is um, uh, while they're trying to resolve um, I think um, we could, uh, what we could do is that uh, open the floor for any comments uh, up to now <clears throat> and we'll try to respond and my colleagues could respond directly without video and in that way we can continue with this transmission. Thank you. Any questions? Thanks, Alejandro. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's um, great to hear um, from both from Kenya and from Peru how food systems have played such an important role in maintaining health and food security during COVID. And it's fascinating to hear that there have been no deaths, even though, you know, the site in Kenya is only 18 kilometers from Mombasa, which is, you know, obviously a, a big city where there's been a lot of COVID. And also the Potato Park is quite near Cusco, which is another big city. I, I was just wondering how, how many actual cases of COVID were there in the Potato Park? Um. I believe the, the cases were um, a minimum. Um, in fact, we don't know if those cases were 
uh, related to COVID, do um, people refer them as cold because they have the same symptoms, but because they were not, um, you know, uh, the uh, the symptoms were not that, um, uh, you know, those um, critical symptoms that COVID kind of expresses. Um, we're not actually sure um, if they were related to COVID or they were just, um, a, you know, flu or, or, or um, cold. Uh, probably if we want to know, we will have to do some type of test um, so that we will know if uh, people had the virus uh, and then uh, do more systematic type of analysis of what were those reasons why people have responded um, in the, or why the, the disease had only a mild uh, effect on them. But even those cases that are reported as cold or flu were minimal. Um, and that's what we're talking about the height of the uh, the COVID um, system. And by now we know that, uh, you know, how the virus um, gets into your system is because it kind of, um, you know, um, gets stuck in, in, in what is called the ACE2, uh, which is more uh, prevalent or expressed um, more in populations that uh, you know, have uh, uh, or depend on industrialized or highly processed foods, and it's less um, when uh, in populations that um, still uh, you know are connected to more organic or more natural type of uh, food production, um, and that's the case of most of the communities that the EMIP network works with. So, but that, need, that needs to be um, studied, uh, that needs to be, um, you know, um, um, analyzed in a more systematic way so that we can know <clears throat> what type of foods are those that have, uh, have um, uh, you know, provided this type of uh, immune boosting uh, properties. Uh, so that um, we can um, uh, promote those types of foods or the combination of foods or the combination of this um, uh, <clears throat> portfolio of foods with medicinal plants because the food system is very diverse and uh, um, we will have to do um, a more focused analysis of that. But the truth is that there was not a single debt in a country that has like the highest per capita debt in the world. So that's remarkable. And we have visited similar communities in the region and even in the Amazon where the, the, the COVID, system, uh, the COVID um, pandemic has hit very hard. And the communities that are still depend on traditional food systems do not report deaths and all the uh, pandemic had just a uh, mild impact. So this is uh, really, uh, and uh, the IMIP uh, has been doing this, um, um, you know, initial inquiry on the, uh, uh, the impacts of COVID on the IMIP communities where uh, localization of food systems and the promotion of traditional foods uh, the uh, heritage foods are um, uh, it's the focus of the of the network, and all of them have reported no deaths. And so this may be uh, a trend, uh, a global trend that needs to be looked, for, I think, uh, with more detail, and uh, uh, to show that the indigenous food systems. Um, are a response to this crisis. I think also the second point um, that is common 
is that while in the shanty towns in, of the cities, where the majority of migrant population live because they go in search of uh, work and jobs, the dream of you know uh, capitalism in the cities, um, people. Uh, because of the lockdown, because of the health restrictions on how, you know, the health guidelines are, do are, uh, are done in Geneva and for the whole world, and that's applied by governments by uh, with military uh, style, like in Peru, you, know, you have the army in the streets, uh, not uh, allowing anyone to walk or to go to work. So that has created, you know, uh, another pandemic of food crisis, uh, economical crisis, and, uh, you know, psychological crisis because of how mental health has, the, uh, you know, uh, became uh, another pandemic in, in, in people that, that have been locked down for so long. But, in the countryside, people, because the how the farms are set up, people can go uh, to the gardens, uh, people uh, can do work, and, uh, you know, in the open where the wind is uh, very prevalent. So those people are more healthy. Uh, economically, they have, um, uh, you know, um, They've been sheltered by their own food systems, which are very much connected to their economical activities. So there too, I think there is uh, elements that we need to look in depth to see how we use those, um, uh, those strengths in terms of how the economy is linked to the landscape, how the economy is linked to the um, agricultural practices that people owe production, the healthy food that people produ uh, produce there that can be promoted in a way, uh, you know, nutraceuticals are promoted as the um, key, um, uh, uh, you know, sources of food that can help uh, communities and the cities uh, to have like a better response to this disease. But the truth is that, you know, the highly industrialized or highly processed food systems uh, uh, are directly responsible, at least in the case of Peru. So Alejandra, we, we have a couple of questions now that have come in. Um, I think we still don't have the picture in Peru. Should, so shall we, shall we carry on with some questions? Yes, please. Okay. Um, so we have a question from Selena. Uh, I can't see your whole name. Tala. Um, would you like to put your camera on? Oh, sorry. Ta Tala de Zarate. Would you like to put your camera on and ask the question? Or or would you? Yes. Yeah? Go ahead. I can't put on my camera for some reason. Uh, I don't know why. Um, but um yeah, I was. Thank you, first of all, for a really interesting webinar. It's been yeah really nice to follow this discussion. Um, I was wondering how the youth engages with traditional knowledge and if there are any difficulties in that. Thank you. Um, I will ask um, uh, our friends from Kenya first if they would like to respond to this um, very important and. A question, and then uh, if uh, one of my brothers and sisters in Peru could also respond. If not, I could. Um, if they still have problems with the connection, I will respond. Chemuko. Uh, is the question about the succession issues? Yeah, how youth are involved in all this process and maintaining traditional knowledge and um, keeping, uh, you know, our old biocultural heritage to the future. And if there's any pro uh, there's problems with the involvement, and if not, how are you solving that? 
that's what I understood uh, from the question. Sorry okay. if I didn't catch yeah. it. Okay, thank you. I think uh, I, I will uh, ask one of the community members to respond to the question. And Lennox, you can respond to the question about the youth and what are you doing to ensure that uh, youth are part of uh, this uh, indigenous food systems, the culture, and uh, succession to having. Uh, sisi, uh, especially kama vidyana, tumeweza kuhusisha kikamilifu uh, sana sana kwenye uh, event zetu za kitamaduni kama hii tunaita mwaka mpya wa kirabai. Kwayo tumeweza kuleta vidyana waweze kushirikiana sisi kwa kisha kwa mba tumeadhimisha siku hii. Na imekuwa rahisi kwa sababu tuliweza ku, uh, kuchanganya sherehe hii na mpira. Kwa hiyo vijana walipata nafasi tangia siku ya kwanza mpaka ya mwisho ya sherehe hizi kuweza kujifunza na kutambua utamaduni wao kikamilifu. Hilo ni la kwanza. Uh, as the youth, we use uh, cultural uh, ceremonies to encourage participation of uh, fellow youth. So Lennox is uh, a member of the Rabai cultural uh, group. So he mentions like during the cultural ceremonies that are undertaken in the Rabai cultural uh, village, they incorporate the youth and they bring in attractive activities such as uh, soccer and other forms of sport such as arts that uh, encourage youth participation. So through their participation, they're able to learn from the elders. They're able to observe the cultural uh, rituals that are undertaken during such ceremonies. And through that, uh, they're able to acquire knowledge from the older generation. Nyingine ya mwisho, during a very important day ya vijana, amboni International Youth Day, to tofauti ambao tumifanya ka wakati huu, tumefanya katika kijiji kile cha utamaduni ndio vijana waweze ku, uh, kusoma utamaduni wao na hata pia kushiriki katika kusherehea kusherehekea kwa kiutofauti zaidi maana pengine uh, kimfumo wa kawaida wangeita wasanii wa kizazi kipya wakaja wakaeka disco wakacheza lakini uh, this time tuliweza kuweka traditional dance vijana wakacheza wakaweza ku learn the instruments we also ensure that uh, activities such as the International uh, Youth Day that uh, ordinarily would be undertaken outside the cultural village, we try as much as possible to bring these activities into the Rabai cultural village as a way of uh, showcasing mm. culture and cultural uh, practices to the youth. And through that, they've been able to learn a lot from uh, the older men and women. And also through the inclusion of uh, youth in the Council of Kaya Elders, they've uh, been able to learn a lot from, uh, a lot of knowledge is transmitted from the Kaya Elders to the youthful uh, population. Na mwisho kabisa, ukiona ata mcheza ngoma wetu waleo hapa, alikuwa ni kijana. Kwa hiyo kwa kijana kuweza kucheza ngoma hizi inakuwa kama uh, chachu kwa vijana wengine ama ina motivate vijana wengine kuona kwamba si jambo la la aibu ama si jambo ambalo linakaa weird ni jambo ambalo kijana yote anaweza kujihusisha. Na most of our forums ambazo tunaorganize kama cultural village tumeweza ku incorporate na among us hapa tuko na almost five young people ambao wamekuwa involved in this process. Kwa hiyo hiyo ni sehemu moja ya kwamba wana learn ili pia nao waweze kupitisha elimu hii kwa vijana wengine. Asante. We have uh, youth uh, members uh, like if you observed uh, keenly the a few of our members who are playing the traditional drums are youth. So through incorporating them into traditional songs and dances they are able to showcase to other youth that culture can actually be entertaining, it can be a source of income because when they play these songs and dances, they are paid. And uh, also as a result of... Uh, oh, oh, that uh, by virtue of their participation in such forum, 
then they are able a chance for creating awareness on the establishment of the biocultural territory heritage in Arabai community. So through this direct engagement, he mentions that the youth are beginning to appreciate the role of uh, culture and they increasingly being involved in uh, traditional knowledge-based activities. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, in the case of the Potato Park, um, perhaps if you allow me, uh, and Matt, I don't know if this is possible, but um, what I, I would like to share one example of how this knowledge transmission is taking place by showing you um, an, a very short clip of how kids are involved in poetry, emphasizing that for knowledge transmission, the maintenance of the local language is key. If the kids uh, continue to speak the native language, like in our case, the Quechua language, then knowledge transmission will happen in the traditional way. The way our elders tell the stories about uh, the nature itself of our foods, how our potatoes have a spirit, how they, they talk to other crops, and all the different legends that enrich the imagination of children. And I think that's the best way how this learning and the intergenerational transmission of knowledge happens. So for you to see just one little um, clip of that, um, allow me to, uh, to show um, this. Um, This is a, um, a very short example of how kids participate in the potato park. Um, this little girl had tell how she sees the relation of herself to the potato and how the, florist, uh, the flowers of the potato um, make more beautiful the world and how it also helps to feel better, not to be sad and to be connected to the land. So those are uh, how, um, those are some examples, or oh, this is one example of how the Potato Park works with the kids. Uh, they, they have this um, a contest in all the local schools, in the local language, and this contest of poetry to the potato just makes the kids to be more connected with the food system, more connected with the traditions, and more connected to uh, expressing those in the ways they see, uh, you know, they, they own grown as a, as a person uh, and people of the future, um, it's, uh, it's framed. So uh, I don't know that, um, I think it, um, I, wanted, I just wanted to try it out. Uh, or to show how this is done in a potato park in a, park in a more graphic way. Christina? Yes, lovely that was. Uh, thank you. 
Um, we have one question from Anderson from Kenya, a question for Peru, uh, which I'll read out to save time. They seem to have a perfect food system. What specific market plan do they use to ensure sustainability? Um, that's a, a good question. And thank you, Anderson, for, for that um, uh, important question. Um, the Potato Park um, has seen different ways of uh, marketing its products, um, but as I said in the, at the beginning, uh, you know, the regulations or the incentives that the national government provide for communities are not there. So it's very difficult to get engaged in the market when the market doesn't have uh, you know, the doors or the mechanics, mechanisms or even just a small window that would uh, allow the communities to, uh, you know, uh, sell the products in, in a better way. Um, <clears throat> nonetheless, uh, the, uh, the communities have um, a trademark, it's called the Potato Park, um, uh, you know, um, collective uh, trademark. And along with IIED and also the communities of IMIT, we are working in developing what we call a biocultural indication. This indication would serve as uh, not just um, you know, as an identifier of the quality of our products, but also as a certification scheme that are linked to our mountain environments. So if we have this type of certification for mountain communities, uh, probably we will call it mountainistan, like one country. And uh, so we think that with that, we could join efforts uh, to see how we better uh, are connected to markets in a just and, um, you know, more equitable way. Christina? Yeah, thank you. Um, that's the end of the questions for now. Um, so over to you, Alejandro. Thank you, Christina. And um, <clears throat> so um, we thank you, everyone. Uh, I think we are at the top of the hour. And that was um, all the time we had. So we had no more questions. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, my last reflection in this is that um, uh, the upcoming Food System Summit is um, an important event. Unfortunately, it has been kidnapped uh, by the by the corporations and uh, um, uh, uh, the participation of communities are being used uh, to create this false impression of participation, of engagement, and uh, while those spaces where public policy is defined are important, uh, I think we have to reclaim uh, by showing also. Uh, our support to the alternative um, uh, people summit that uh, civil society organizations, farmer groups, and other um, uh, research and scientists that uh, support uh, uh, the indigenous and the peasant uh, food systems and the agroecology uh, responses um, are uh, engaged in. Um, I think uh, we need um, uh, a unified voice of those that do, do not believe that the corporate uh, solutions are the solutions for the world. So we invite you to um, continue supporting uh, <clears throat> this alternative um, people's food system that most communities are uh, supporting from the field and engaged in. Thank you. So we thank you very much and I'll leave Christina for the last words. Thank you very much. It's been fascinating to hear from the Rabai community and the Parque de la Papa. So thank you so much to the communities uh, for your efforts. And uh, I think the message I got from, from here is that there is uh, quite clear 
evidence to indicate that food systems which are strong in traditional medicine, medicinal plants, traditional crops, do uh, provide a stronger immunity against COVID. And also I, I understood that the self-sufficiency in these food systems, um, you know, they don't, they store the food, they don't have to depend on the market and access to market. And that has ensured food security. So, um, and as Alejandro indicated, you know, this, this is a very strong indication that indigenous food systems are highly resilient and um, to global pandemics. And I think it's an important avenue that requires more research. So thank you so much to all of you. It's been really interesting and I hope you can um, join us for the next webinar, which is next Tuesday, 14th of September, um, which will focus on communities in India and Peru, um, sorry, India and China. Thank you so much. Thank you, Christina, and uh, thank you to IIED, um, to Matt, and to you, to all the team, communications team there, uh, for your support and uh, our apologies. Um, the apples and the winds of the Potato Park um, <clears throat> were, I think, um, on holiday today, so they didn't allow us uh, a good connection. Thank you.